Hey guys, so we're heading into the end of earnings season. And as my colleague J-Rod likes to say, uh, earnings season is like Christmas four times a year for us as investors because we get to hear how companies are doing. Uh, we get to see how stocks react to those earnings report. And uh, it's just an awesome time to understand what's going on with our portfolio of stocks uh, that we keep an eye on. Um, but one of the things uh, about Christmas is that sometimes it turns out to be a little bit more disappointing than we expected. Uh, I'm sure you remember those years as a kid when you maybe didn't get the present that you expected and uh, Christmas was a little disappointing. Well, sometimes that can happen in the markets uh, with earnings season as well. And this time around, this, uh, this last uh, month or so, we've seen some kind of disappointing reactions in the stock market to some really, really good earnings reports. Um, so companies that reported strong earnings that beat expectations uh, and raised their guidance, actually those stocks did not trade higher uh, as much as we would normally expect. What that tells me is that investors are already expecting good things uh, from these stocks. And so they've already bid the stocks higher ahead of the earnings reports. Uh, and, that, and then once the reports came out, it was sort of a buy on the rumor, sell on the news type situation, which happens sometimes in markets. So when we see an environment like this, it gives us a chance to say, hmm, how can we actually profit from this type of environment? Um, and, and to maybe to, to draw in that correlation of Christmas, uh, you know, we know that the, the savvy shoppers actually go shopping long before Christmas time and they, you know, they, they buy the presents that they're going to give uh, well before the actual holiday approaches. And as investors, we can kind of uh, take a page out of that playbook and we can buy stocks that are going to be bid up ahead of the next earnings season and go ahead and build our positions so that as investors get excited about the upcoming earnings season at the end of uh, Q1, uh, we should be able to profit uh, from those stocks moving ahead of earnings season. So today I wanted to show you three stocks that I've got my eye on that I think are going to be moving higher throughout this quarter as investors position themselves to take advantage of the positive earnings reports that these companies are going to be issuing. So we'll go through those real quickly. And the first one that I wanted to show you is TEX, uh, Terex Corp. Now Terex is actually a heavy equipment manufacturer. So they make a lot of the big uh, machines that move earth and, and so forth. And those are gonna be very important during uh, the upcoming, uh, I think we're gonna see a surge in uh, a, a lot of um, uh, infrastructure projects. So with the Democratic Congress uh, and with the Democrats holding the White House and basically holding a lot of the power in uh, Washington, we're going to see a lot more spending on infrastructure, and that's something that actually both sides of the aisle can get in on. And Terex Corp is one of the main beneficiaries of this uh, this trend. Uh, another reason that I like Terex is that they actually are very cheap compared to what they're expected to earn next year. So this company is we we would consider it a value stock because it's trading at just 13.8 times next year's earnings. That means you're paying about $14 for every dollar that the company is expected to earn, which is much less than the 26, 27, 28 uh, that we've seen in the market recently uh, for the average stock. Uh, right now, um, Terex does not pay a dividend, but the company was paying a dividend before COVID. And once they see that their business is, is moving along and that they're doing just fine, uh, especially with these infrastructure deal, deals coming along, uh, they should reinstate their dividend. And in the past, it's been a 1.2% dividend yield if you take their last dividend and you, uh, you multiply it out uh, by, the, by the stock price. So Terex is a good way of profiting from infrastructure spending. And it's also a, a great way to, uh, to build your income and to also take advantage of the fact uh, that more capital is moving into uh, value stocks. The second one that I wanted to show you is CX, which is CMIX. Uh, this is a company, a materials company, and they make a lot of the materials that are used for building, whether it be uh, building uh, buildings in, in, in large structures or uh, infrastructure projects like uh, new roads, bridges, and so forth. Um, so this is another uh, company that benefits from infrastructure spending. You can see the stock has been moving higher as investors get excited about this trend. Um, and then there's a few other things that, that really help with CMEX. Uh, they are a, a Mexican company. And one of the things that I'm expecting is to see a little bit more of an ease in the trade tensions between the U.S. and Mexico under this new Democratic, uh, Democrat leadership. And so we should see uh, CMEX actually benefit from that. 
another thing is that Mexico is an interesting spot. Um, they're considered a an emerging market, and emerging markets are actually seeing a lot of capital flow into them. So emerging market market stocks are doing quite well. Uh, but Mexico actually offers kind of the best of both worlds because it's developed enough that we know that um, these companies that are in Mexico have um, kind of some political stability and they should be able to continue to operate uh, under a free market. So that's something that characterizes a developed world and one of the benefits of developed worlds. But at the same time, Mexico is a growing economy uh, and, and a continually uh, developing economy. So it's, uh, it's an area that should receive a lot of capital this year. Um, CMEX is also a value stock trading at just 13.6 uh, times next year's expected earnings. Uh, so again, this one will uh, profit from a shift uh, towards more value stocks and away from some of the high price growth stocks. And then the third one that I wanted to show you is Blackstone. And if you've been with us here at the Rich Retirement Report uh, for a long time or Rich Retirement Letter, you know that Blackstone is one of my favorite all time stocks. Uh, this is a private equity company. Uh, the company actually invests in many different uh, individual companies that, um, that may not be available to you and I uh, just buying uh, individual stocks uh, because they can buy out entire companies and they can make changes to those companies and then they can sell those companies to the market in the form of new IPOs or even in, in SPAC deals, which have been very, very popular this year. So Blackstone has been trading to uh, new 52-week highs recently. Uh, based on a lot of the trends that we're seeing in the market right now, a lot of speculation on some of these new issues that Blackstone is profiting from, and at the same time, just a strong market environment in a time when more investors are putting money into alternative investments uh, like the ones that Blackstone run, runs. I love Blackstone's business model because they make money from uh, regular fees that they charge for every dollar that's invested with the fund. They also make incentive allocations, which means that they make money when their investing customers make money. And then they also make money by investing their own money alongside of their customers. So they've got three different ways of making profits, and they generally do quite well in good markets and during bad markets uh, because they actually have a very robust uh, business. Um, and the company actually pays a great dividend as well. It's a variable dividend that uh, depends on how much uh, earnings the company makes. Uh, but Blackstone over time has paid a great dividend that you can use either to, uh, to fund your retirement expenses or to re, uh, reinvest into new shares. So Blackstone is a great company with a lot of things going for it right now. So those are three companies that I think we could buy right now uh, in between earnings season uh, in order to watch them move up as investors get excited about the upcoming earnings season. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and that you'll uh, invest in some of these names uh, and, and use them to build your own retirement wealth. And I'd love to hear your feedback on these names or other stuff that we've been talking about here at the Rich Retirement Letter. Uh, please send your feedback to richretirementfeedback at stpaulresearch.com. I read every me email that comes into that uh, inbox, so I love hearing what's going on in your lives, uh, in your retirement, in your investment portfolio, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.